Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. All right, guys, we're back here at the airport. I think it's day five or six uh, that, that we've been working on the TV20. Maybe it's seven or eight. I don't know. We've got a lot of work done. We have a lot to do. So we're going to get in here. We're going to get at it. Today our goal is to get the belly pan on, to get the tail cone on, to get these wings completely cleaned up, to get new plugs in it, new ELT battery, and three new tubes and tires. That's where we're going today. And a new transponder. And a new trans... Oh, you have a transponder? No. Oh. Do you? Shoot. No, I do not have one, in fact. So we did have a transponder check done to you just make sure it's right. Hey, what's up? It is not Jason, but welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. Jason wasn't able to make it. He's off doing another project. Imagine that, right? And I am meeting the gentleman named Derek, who is going to do a VFR check on the TB20 Trinidad that you've been following along on. So come along and see what it's all about. So what's your guys' names and what are you doing? I'm Charlie, that's Donovan, and we come out. And he mainly does a lot of these Frederick IFR and VFR search, but sometimes, now that I'm done school, I come out and help him as well. Very cool. This may take a minute or two to come alive, I don't know. So showed up 5.6. Supposed to be zero, but can be plus or minus three. Yeah. So we're gonna get creative here. Don, hand me that um that box back there. Yeah. I'm just gonna be curling around down here. <laughs> Turn it back on. 3.8, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. That 66 dBm is also too low. Keep, yeah, keep retesting it. See if it, as it warms up, it might come up some. 3.3 and 67. Yeah, it's still not going to pass like that. I don't think this thing's gonna pass. I think what you're gonna probably have to do is get a new transponder head, pull it out, put a new one in, and see if that fixes the problem. That's most likely what it is. So there's the sad news that the transponder did not pass the test. That's a bummer. Those transponders are a dime a dozen, but we do need something with uh, ADS-B out anyways. So I think we're just gonna go ahead, uh, we'll either go ahead and just replace that with what's there just to get it home, or we'll see if there's a slide in replacement that goes right in place. All right guys, I wanted to introduce today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare has been with us here at Rebuild Rescue pretty much from the start. They're an awesome company, they support us, and I really appreciate what they bring to the table. Every time I'm thinking of a struggle I may be having or just, you know, I, maybe I want to learn something or I want to up my game, I check out what they have. They're offering new classes all the time with some really, really great teachers. Just like the teacher of the class I'm working on right now, Jordy Vandeput. Video editing in Teams, infrastructure, and Adobe Premiere Pro workflow. My team and I were having problems trying to figure out how to edit all these videos in such a short time while we're sharing all the same files. This class 
completely nailed it. And guys, the first 1,000 people that click the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. There's something on there for everybody to up their game. What are you working on, Jake? Uh, we're gonna put this brush on the buffer, and um, we're gonna see if we can clean some more stuff off the wings. How's it looking, Jake? It's coming along. I mean, it's definitely better than what it was. If you guys look, it is that scrubby pad, which this is something in the automotive world. We'll use this on carpets. We have three different fibers, uh, three different stiffnesses that we use. And man, it'll, it, it doesn't hurt the surface, but it'll definitely, it's, it's kind of like a, a really, really, really high speed scrubby pad. And it's it's taken what's left of this right off. Looks pretty good. What do you think about the paint, Jake? I think it's gonna put a few swirls in it. But you think but it's savable? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Looking good, Jake, good job. It's awesome, thank you. So Jake's gonna keep at it. Um, uh, this is looking just really clean and really smooth. I got the, the front belly pan up and now we're gonna get the rear belly pan. Sam's quiet over there, so he's been working on getting the inspection plates back up. And then we got the tail cone, spark plugs, cowling, and a couple other things. And I could start buttoning this thing up, so. It's looking good.
Okay, can I grab you a second? Let's clean this up in the meantime and then we'll put it right back on. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can clean that up in here. Gotcha. I'll yeah. grab the, the scrub. Do a nice job. with my bucket in the front. Careful, you can wipe off that lens, but be very careful doing it. What, this one? No. They're very fragile. Could you just drop that in there? Yeah, I might just do that, actually. I was just thinking that. Let that soak. Yeah. All right, belly panel number two is installed. All the screws are in. So next, we gotta get this tail on. Can you grab me the small bottle of coil, please? He's producing heat. I see some uh, bird stuff in there. Should we take it off and get behind there? Mm -hmm. I don't think it'd be a bad idea. I'd definitely get some uh, some penetrant. You know, just kind of spray it back in here to try to get that screw because that screw is probably going to want to strip out. Yeah, I see a seabird that's right. Yeah, yeah we'll to clean that out. out. Did you put some penetrant in there? I did not. It's just a little metal screw. Got it? figure out how that comes out. Yeah, as I said, taking the wingtips off, um, you get in there. Or vacuum. Right there. Oh. Yeah, if you guys look in there, birds get everywhere. Like, 
I'm not even sure how they got up in here and all the way out there because there's no access points. There isn't an access point until you get up by the landing gear. So they were coming all the way up through the wing, through these little holes to make a nest right here, which is just, it's crazy, you know, and, and it only takes like a couple days, if that, maybe even a couple hours for a bird to make a nest somewhere. So it's, it's a constant battle if you don't have your, um, you know, have your airplanes hangered. like a bale of hay in here. After Sam found that straw sticking out of the landing and taxi light, um, you know, we, we pulled those lights out and you guys saw, I mean, there's just, there was so much uh, just straw and grass and stuff stuck in there. We're gonna pull the wingtips off. I have a feeling we're gonna find a ton in there as well. All right, so let's see how much junk is in this wingtip. A lot of junk. <laughs> so it's, it's Actually, pretty much full. Perfect. Let me get the trash bag. right away on this db20 is how much zinc chromate is on this it's dirty in here we will get in here and we'll clean this all down at the hangar and once we get it back at our hangar yeah this there's no corrosion or anything i mean the zinc chromate primer definitely did its job all right it's good cleaned up let's get this tip back on It looked like we got maybe, I don't know, a pound of straw from the other wing. So I'm kind of curious to see what's gonna be over here. So I'm betting we have at least two pounds of bird junk. Jake, can you clean this tip out? Yes, sir. All right. So while Jake's getting that wing tip cleaned out, I'm gonna get all this out. I can't believe how much is in here. Don't forget, we have two other bags of bird stuff 
that we got out of the insides of the wings. This is from the tips and the tail alone. And let me tell you, it's actually pretty heavy. What are those? So this is uh, the ELT battery, emergency locator, and 12 spark plugs. Get this ELT battery installed and then we'll get those plugs in. All right, we have to get the back of the airplane cleaned off yet. The wings look really good. Awesome job. Um, all the inspection panels, uh, the belly panels are up, the EL new ELT is installed, the batteries are in. We basically just have spark plugs to put in yet and put three tires on and tubes and that's it. That's it, then she's ready to go. These plugs actually, after cleaning them up, look pretty good. We did have, I think it was cylinder four, was running a little bit cold and it would misfire depending on, uh, you know, when, uh, what, what side of the mag I turned off. So, you know, when, even though the plugs look pretty good, I mean, you know, it's really good insurance. Just put new plugs in, that way they're brand new. Once we get them in, we'll be able to run it up again. We'll be able to check cylinder four make sure it's firing right. These are what the plugs are supposed to look like. Brand new. Wow, that looks really good. Looks awesome. Yeah, so I think this is this is gonna clean up pretty much perfect. I can't wait to get this all wet sanded up and the whole thing buffed. I, I think the whole airplane's gonna turn out like really, really good. I, I kinda wish we would have just been able to have it that messed up up at uh, our hangar and then do a complete video of like bringing it back around as far as the cleanup because I promise you guys this thing's gonna look 
absolutely amazing. After it's all cleaned and it's all wet sanded and it's all buffed up, it's gonna look like a completely different airplane from you know from when you guys first saw it. Good job. Thank you, sir. All right, these struts being um, unequal are killing me. I'm not sure why they are because we have a brand new strut uh, nitrogen system and we set them correctly, but something's just off. I might, we might have got a bad um, pressure gauge for the strut, uh, strut tool. We're gonna add some, add some air to the right one and then you know, we're gonna pull some air from the left one in this front one and equalize it. knew that was going to happen. So it has the right air pressures and we got a little lubrication in the shafts of all the struts. Now it looks like it's good. So really at this point, Jake has done so well getting the TV20 scrubbed up. It's looking good. He's almost done. We, I think we really have everything done except for reinstalling the heat shields on the engine and um, you know putting the cowling on and putting the tires on. Then we're done. All right, day five. It's like three or four o'clock. We're wrapping up for the day. It is crazy hot. We went from like 60 degree days to 90 degree days in like a week here. We'll be back to finish this TV 20 up. We'll see you soon. All right guys, we're back here at the hangar with the TV 20. The annual that I figured would take us four days now is running on day, it might be 10, 12. I don't even know anymore, I lost count. It takes a ton of work to get one of these airplanes back operating. We've had multiple uh, folks working on it. Joe has been absolutely awesome. It's going really well. So today, I mean, really to, to finish this up, all we have to do is the tires. We got to get the, uh, the transponder uh, put in it. Yeah. Transponder plugged in and get another check on it. Uh, you know, make sure our altitude is all correct and right. all that stuff. And uh, we have some baffles to put in and then put the yep. cowling on. And yep. then we have an AD to do on a horizontal stave. Okay. And an AD. Which we is... all know about ADs. If you watch the 401 videos, ADs can be really bad, but this is a simple one. Yes. And then, uh, you know, get, get the cowlings on and, and we want to ground run this thing, get it up to temperature and then you know pull that filter off yeah, cut, cut, the, filter. cut the filter we want to check for metal this is only a 200 hour engine and i do know that it was ran here and there um at least when it was first parked uh you know talking to some of the people that were involved with the airplane here but safety is number one so we'll run it get it up to heat cut that filter make sure it looks good get a new filter on it and then after that yep. it should be ready for some test flights we'll put oil back in it too oh we gotta have oil in it yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Without with, without a cracked funnel. Yes. Good without funnel. a cracked funnel. A mo yes. metal funnel. I, we'll yeah. use a metal funnel on this one. And uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> let's get at it. I'm really extra excited today because this project's been a little bit of a marathon. So really excited to get the tires on it and get it running. You know, a, a lot of I had a lot of folks reaching out, kind of asking why get another airplane because. It's obvious we have a lot of projects to do. 
You see, the thing is, is I, when I really figured out, and it was a, you know, probably a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, how long that 401 is going to take us. You know, we Sam and I want to do some angel flights, and this being a two-door, up to five passenger, depending on load, airplane with a good autopilot and stuff, this is a perfect airplane to use for that. So I thought, hey, let's go ahead, let's get it, let's get it flying, and we can do some flights a while. You know, we can, we can start helping people now. What about the other one? Doing one at a time? Or? Rustin keeps things from going back. They never seize the pins, everything will look good. Brake pads are new. And the vis are new too. And they're really not pitted bad. They're rusty, but they're not pitted bad. Yeah, see, even the pins aren't stuck. Pop right off. Yeah. Caliper's not leaking. But we'll clean them off again and never seize them again. I've never seen one of these before. I don't think any of us have. This is like a really cool, so it, it's a splined retaining ring that keeps the outside nut from turning and has this like built-in spring clamp in it. So literally to get it off, you just pop it off, but you have to use a certain amount of force for it to come out of the seat. It's really easy to remove and really easy to put in and Seems to work pretty good. I've never seen one before. So these tires were actually replaced before it was parked. There's a flat spot, huge flat spot from where it was sitting, but look at the dry rot in that tire. I mean, it's, it's really bad. It's actually worse than uh, you know, what the Phoenix was. So it'd be good to get new rubber on here. halves look brand new no corrosion no anything the only thing we have is a little bit a little bit of rust on these rotors so we soak that down with some penetrating fluid we'll let that soak in there a bit and we'll pop this rotor off we'll clean up both sides of the disc
YouTube was always been over. Yeah, yeah, drink it from day one. Yeah. Looks like so much fun, doesn't it? You sure you don't want to try this, Corey? <laughs> Nothing like a brand new set of sneakers. <sighs> that fresh rubber smell in the morning, that's what it's all about. Brand new tube. New socks and shoes. <laughs> new socks and shoes. <laughs> Got the tube set in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of air in the tube to expand it in there so it gets away from the center of the tire, which makes it easier to get the wheels in. Thank you guys for mentioning that last tire episode. Looks like a chain. Hey, Joe. Sir, yes, sir. Was this the uh, this outer one? This is the outer, which yeah. is. That one. This one here, yep. right? That one there. Wait, no. This one here. Then that. Then one of these. One down, one to go. Two to go. Oh, yeah, two to go. <laughs> one more main to go. Oh. Twist it up.
This tire still has the nipples on it. It was never used. It was installed years and years ago. And now it's dry cracked. And we gotta replace it. All right, all the tires are mounted. Everything's working right. We got them. Uh, we got to check the air pressure yet, but it's looking good. Man. It's a little nerving drilling into your airplane <laughs> to do a service. Even bolt. though you're following a service bolt and by the manufacturer, it's just nerve wracking. But you know, it's one of the ADs that need done. You need to get some access points so we can get a scope, get it up in there, um, and we're checking the attachment points. Correct. We're actually we're checking the whole rear spar for corrosion. Okay, is what it is. Which I don't and see we, anything on the front side, so I'm not thinking not we're going to see anything on the back side. Yeah. That one. Uh, look at that. Clean. It's been, it's been done. Oh yeah. It's like it's been pulled and painted. Actually, maybe when they did that elevator fitting, they already did it. Yeah. But it wasn't. If you look up. in here, it looks really good. Same corrosion though. Oh, that's a little dent. That's the other side. That's the back. Yeah, that's this back side. It looks good. That makes me happy. But definitely gonna need to uh, yeah, get it treated. Get it treated. It looked good. There's a little bit of like kind of paint flaking and stuff. So part of that AD talks about a corrosion inhibitor being applied to the inside. So we'll do that and uh, plug those holes up. Get the tail on. Yep. Get this thing fired up. Yeah, so we will.
All right, Joe, we got the baffles on, we got the tires on, AD done. tail is done. We got to run it again. So we get to run. So we get to enjoy my favorite part, which is making noise, airplane sounds with airplanes instead of just <laughs> acting like it. Oh, we do have to put the transponder in yet. Oh yeah, we can slide that in. It's quick. Yes. All right. The so we do have to replace the transponder. We got this from an avionics shop because this transponder was just out of frequency when we had it tested, and these things are super easy to replace and let's power it up and see if it turns on Yep, power's up. Good. All right. So next we just got to pull this thing out. I'm, I'm going to get my headset on and make sure that the rest of uh, the avionics and everything work. All right, Joe. What do you think? Fire it up, get some heat in it? Yes. Run it for a while, then we're going to change our oil, cut the filter up. We're so close, I can taste it. Zulu, wind variable at three knots. All right, so it sounds like the radios in the TV20 are working absolutely perfect. Everything just seems to be working really well. But other than just looking a little bit sunbaked, it's in really good shape. Also want to remind you guys that we're going to be at Oshkosh 2022, and we're going to be giving away over $7,000 in cash and prizes. We're going to be at the Avidine booth Monday from 11 a.m. till 12.30, Tuesday from 9.30 to 11, and Wednesday from 9.30 to 11. And then we're also going to be in the Aspen booth on Monday and Tuesday from 1 to 2 p.m. Guys, come over and meet me. I want to meet you guys. Get entered in the contest. Just for coming over, everybody gets one entry for the contest. If you got some Rebuild Rescue merch on, that's five entries, so make sure you guys have your shirts. If you already have them, make sure you're wearing them. If you don't have them yet, make sure you get them. Come out and meet us. I want to give away this cash to you guys. Also, I saw some comments that a lot of people said they couldn't make it. You know, there were some people that are in different parts of the country, different parts of the world that couldn't make it. I thought about it. We're going to be broadcasting live on Wednesday, and we're going to be announcing the winners at Oshkosh we're also going to be announcing 10 random people from the live broadcast that are also going to win cash and prizes. And guys, go over to our Instagram. There's a list of the prizes, how much you're going to win, what the prizes are, and all the sponsors that are involved. Make sure you stop by. Make sure you catch the live. Hop on over to Instagram. Check it out. I can't wait to see you guys all. Oh, let's get back to getting this thing flying. Let's get this thing fired up and switch on. Fuel selector, they are both full. Strobes are on. Nav lights are on. Fuel pump is on. Throttle quarter open. Throttle slightly. Parking brake is on. Clear prop.
Hey guys, so this thing acted completely and utterly perfect. It idles like, I could probably idle this thing all day at like 300 RPM if I wanted to. It's just so smooth. It's awesome. Brakes work. Prop kicked in like right away. I, I was ginger with it at first, you know, but it, it kicked in right away. I think we're ready to fly home. So guys, we got a ton of projects and we're making so much headway right now. So make sure you guys subscribe, make sure you like this video, give us some love and turn your notifications on because you're gonna wanna see what we're doing next. So next video, we're gonna be taking this TB20, we're gonna cut the filter, we're gonna check for particles just to be safe. Fresh filter, fresh oil, put the cowing on. We're going up in the air. We're gonna make some laps around the airport. As long as everything goes well, we're flying home. Thank you guys for coming along for the ride. I appreciate you. See you soon.